welcome back to the class everyone today we are in our second match of the month we're back in the 3v3 season unfortunately we took the l to the cheater beforehand because he cheated so now we're up against roesty not really quite sure how that said uh, but he is our current opponent before as always before we get to look at what he's placed on a defense it's kind of a tough defense let's go ahead and look at the overall stats uh, that we have going on between our two rosters so this is our opponent and you can see that very different from our last opponent who had a risk rating of zero this guy has a risk rating of 97 which means he has a very significant roster advantage uh, that means that he has 500 more relic levels than us which apparently is the max risk rating which i guess makes sense uh he does have better mods than us as well but we can look into the more specifics on those i suppose uh, where exactly he has the advantage but yeah so he's got more plus 25s not huge margins 30 more plus 20s that does hurt and a hundred my gosh 150 more plus 15s that that is actually going to be prevalent during the match and during the stream uh 150 plus 15s is going to be visible so not great there we do have him beat in gc omicrons i guess he does have like the five really good ones though like qui-gon jinn wampa zam starkiller Aiden are all very top level in my opinion so very good for him in that regards we do have the first order and dash one that he does not so i guess we have that going for us that's good but still 97 this is this is going to be pretty hard to overcome i'm pretty sure uh that being said let's go ahead and look at the look at the board he does have right also we still don't have ray we only are four requirements away from having ray unlocked though so that is really cool but getting into the actual match here i'm going to show what i placed on defense and this is very different from what i placed on last time because we were going for a weird efficiency thing versus the cheater and granted that's not the case this time we changed things up so i've got han Chewie in front here and this is the old data cron actually from the first set that decreases your cooldown so maybe hoping dash kind of decreases his cooldowns and spams his days probably not gonna make much of a difference the Jedi anakin one here isn't much it's just the dispel i think that could be a really annoying depending on the counter he uses the then we have maul and gas who have no data crons in the back wall we do have our stunicron jmk as well as our c we put malik here and then we put this bat I, I really don't like this darth revan team i cannot wait cannot wait only one more match we have to do this because then we'll have malgus and malgus will take part of this team he'll be the lead and we'll shove darth revan right here and then we'll figure something to do with talon uh the crappy item team specifically placed this crappy item team because i wanted to get bam off of defense and it's gonna pay off i think probably we'll see uh, and then i have my general luke with my only uh, this has been kind of ticking me off my only 25 percent turn meter uh data chrono i'm back i think I've, i think i've rolled 14 including being reable so multiple chances to get in just haven't uh top wall isn't really oh, oh shoot i don't think i changed ships oh this is gonna be fun uh newt grievous finn uh cls with his data cron data cron isn't super great it's the dispel and then they get offense defense penetration yeah i don't think i changed my my fleet setup so oh yeah that might that might mess with things <laughs> so we have a, we're gonna be having to do the executor mirror again assuming we get to fleets uh bottom wall for him he's got lord vader he's got gas jmk shorty which is a new team for us we've never fought one of those and then ray uh we'll get to his data crons during the actual fight i'm not sure how game breaking they are going to end up being and then he has slkr grand inquisitor star killer and um i guess just normal mon mothma nuke team so quite a bit of defense uh but we're gonna we're gonna try our best we only have three galactic legends but i think i think a lot of the match is gonna hinge on the fact that fennec has to beat this team with bam and it's there's no datacron but it's it's a rough counter it's only like at 60 percent or something like that so here goes nothing all right so let's go ahead and get into these and this is a really fun one this is quite the pick me up after our last match not not just this individual match with fennec versus lord vader uh but j this whole match in general just had a bunch of really fun counters so as you can see, we're taking Fennec up against uh, Lord Vareth Maul here. There are no Datacrons on our side, so this is a very old-school match. Uh, we're able to delete Maul right off the bat. Luckily, when he was going for his hits, he would only trigger damage immunity without killing someone, so that was really nice. I think that's probably the biggest win clause here. We make a point to not ever use birds in this fight, and we don't want to. 
because we still have a chance for more damage immunity with bam and if he's already squatting before that happens then he doesn't have a chance he has to go use his birds instead of using his damage immunity. so we're able to get damage immunity out with him uh, we're able to do a number on royal guard really really quickly here we don't opt for the armor shred on him just because i i think we can kill him pretty quickly like he's not he's not looking so hot we definitely make sure to prioritize getting the dots off with uh grief just because he can pretty easily get back around to that cooldown uh, we do land the first set of armor shred on lord vader and then just really start hammering away with the basics again uh making sure to cleanse the dots off every single time we have a chance just to make sure that he can get back around because he's he's reducing the cooldown of that for every de debuff that he's getting rid of on himself so it's not it's not like we're getting rid of it for a very long time and then yeah fennec just clocks lord vader and while that doesn't necessarily win the match for us it opens the door to being able to win it uh this match yikes okay uh so level nine datacron on their jmk i believe and we have ours as well we immediately get through the the sacrifice ability there on mace we're immediately able to get rid of mace and they they get their ult almost instantly because they have the the data crown that does that that gets it really quickly so we have to kind of focus in on jmk here just for a second i don't want to but we can we need to increase the cooldowns on cat uh because jmk just put that on her and she could have just deleted someone right out of the open so her cooldowns down so now we, we, we just need to kill her really need to make sure she dies here luckily cam hits super hard with the data crown that we have the level 9 data crown we have with jml is the one that increases the damage by 150 percent after they're called into assist and they get jedi legends um or jedi lessons sorry so cam hits super hard and obviously repost played a very big part there too now off to our favorite gl counter that is slkr and mon mothma versus ray this ray doesn't really have a good data crown it's not one of the level nines where she hits super hard or she gets ult every other turn or whatever it is but uh, i mean she's, it's still ray she's modded pretty well i'm pretty sure she's our nine but i mean this counter just works every single time the first time that ray goes to get her ult we have a buddy so it doesn't kill us does get pretty close though we do make sure to keep armor stunned the entire match without having her stunned she is just going to lay us out because she can make ray not be crit and we really just can't kill ray uh, so we stay on her as much as we can and we've had 100 percent ult charge for a minute now but we're specifically saving the ult for when she has her next ult so that we don't have to take that damage uh we do just go ahead and hit hoda for fun i was kind of hoping we would be able to swipe him to steal his mastery but uh just ended up killing him and from here the goal now is just to kill ray before she gets to her next ult and she is r9 uh, so she does tank it for a little bit but ultimately it's not enough and we get the solid 54 on her so this is another new battle to me they had sortie and they had sortie with the 25 percent turn meter which i think is a total of 45 percent turn meter it just doesn't matter uh bad batch can go second this team just doesn't at least in threes they didn't do anything like sortie's big hit granted she wasn't modded for a lot of offense so there was that but it just yeah didn't go very far uh we may we go ahead and just try to kill r2 to get the the initial kill off works pretty well i didn't want to get rid of the days off on bb8 so that's why i went after r2 there and yeah i mean it's there's just not a lot they can do they have so many buffs we're able to rip them off every single time we we do make sure to drop the turn meter on r2 because he wasn't the one with vip uh sorty is not hard to get through at all with healing immunity and exposes otherwise i think she can be a major pain in the butt but yeah this pretty darn easy really easy 54 there whatever the max banners was uh, so now we had originally planned on using our star killer on theirs in the mirror but i was looking over their mods and it looked pretty much like we would actually be able to wampa their their star killer so i'm like okay if we can wampa their star killer let's go ahead and just star killer their gas here i mean this is really stinking easy um we go ahead and trigger the five sacrifice on rex just because that way he has less defense to work through we immediately daze gas i mean this is and it doesn't end up being good banners uh because we killed them too quickly but you know 54 is fine too so now we have to beat their star killer womp up pot and this is kind of sketchy we had just enough just enough tenacity um to not to outdo their potency and we had just enough speed so that palp wasn't really able to lap us and trigger the stagger uh, so this this works out really well um 
We do have to be really careful at some turns here. We don't need the he our health back from hit using the basics, so we just use the roar because that'll get us a little bit more turn meter. And what I'm trying to get back to is I'm trying to get back to the icebreaker. So the next time that Mara go ahead goes ahead and uses her tenacity down, we don't have or we have a way to instantly cleanse it. Uh, so again, we basic there, so now we don't need to worry about basic in here because we're already at full health. So I'm just thinking, all right, I think we just go for the roar again. We, we want to get back to as many turns as possible. We don't really need to do it right now. I don't want to hit Star Killer because if he counters us, then he gets closer to Unleash. And when he gets Unleashed, he cleanses everything. And if he cleanses everything, then we're, we're just a dead man. Uh, so we we took a minute to think here, but I believe we eventually just ended up going with the Roar. And I mean, look, look at the relics on these guys. I think it's a full R8 team. Our Wombo's over here just like, I'm only R7. So they get Tenacity down again. Not good. And at this point, I'm like, okay. I think we just need to kill Palp because if we can kill Palp, then this is going to be a pretty easy uh, cleanup. He eventually dies to dots. We're, in, we're able to take a turn and get rid of the tenacity down naturally. And here is a really pivotal moment where we had we had to make the right call. If we basic Star Killer right now, it doesn't kill him. He counters us. He gets unleashed. He dispels the dots, and then we're dead. So what we have to do, we have to roar and let Starkiller just die to his own dots. He has 25 dots on him right now. And he's pretty low health. That kills him. Uh, we're able to get our Icebreaker up, and we kill him for 58 banners. Take that, Starkiller. And this is why we mod our MJ for potency, because landing that initial stun is very, very important on Womp, because if you don't, he can just take control of the battle and beat Starkiller, who's a really good Omicron. So uh, we have to beat their SLKR. This SLKR team comp kind of weirds me out. I mean, it's... No tank is okay. Uh, that being said, we take our Lord Vader. We do take in Royal Guard just in case. Ever since they fixed the whole negative mastery thing like a few days ago, I don't really feel bad about taking in Royal Guard because the issue with Royal Guard before that was you kind of had to hold your ult so you didn't take in negative mastery. Now it doesn't really matter. So we do we do get into this fun fight with SLKR and he is R9 so he is doing a lot of damage. And we have to be careful here because we don't want to get too healthy because you can see here in a minute that when SLKR crits us when we're at full health he does a lot of damage he's doing almost 200k and he's stacking mastery as well so yeah and now he's doing 200 full 200k damage on his crit so I'm trying to balance things right now I don't want to get too low in health so he can just one shot me but I also don't want to get too high in health so that if he crits me I'm a I'm a dead man so yeah, I think you'll notice here, I think we just basic, or yeah, I just I do just the basic, so we don't go back to full health. Now we use the heal, because I know it won't put us into the 80 percentile. Go ahead and use the, the last ability there, and now we go ahead and use our ult, and I believe we use the ability block, so now he has ability block and healing immunity, and we can just kill him. So, 54 banners there, I'll take it, went pretty well. This fight, ugh. So they have the really good data crown for Jedi Anakin. They have the 25% turn meter and the 100% damage when they're boosted. So we made a mistake here and we took in Bastila instead of Hoda. I think Hoda would have been able to tank it. But that being said, now with both Savior exhausted, Grandmaster is about to keel over. Pretty much the only place to just kill Qui-Gon and then let something else clean it up without having to deal with his Omicron. So... Uh, we get one big hit on their Qui-Gon. It is enough. We go ahead and just go for the assist for with Grandmaster Yoda here in the Jedi Anakin. I think we... He, so we had the Foresight, so we dodged one hit, but I think he dodged both hits, which that was annoying. So we did the basic here for the, the whatchamacallit, uh, the Foresight. Unfortunately, the Jedi Anakin just one-shots our Jedi Knight Revan, so that kind of sucked, and then they killed our GMI. So wasn't too fun there. We'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Now they have Grand Inquisitor, and they have they have the good Omicron with Grand Inquisitor. It's the level 6 that I think makes it every time they get a debuff, they do 10% max health damage. So it's essentially a type of Amplify Agony, uh, which is... I don't think my Gear 12 tray was going to hold up to it, so we just went ahead and used our Vader Thrawn Watt. Kind of a weird counter. Uh, without 7th in here, they don't have a whole lot of ways to heal. So we, just make, we make sure to fracture their Grand Inquisitor, because he's really the only one that's going to do a lot of damage here. And Thrawn lead really loves debuffs. They they can hit us with a bunch, and we just end up getting a ton of turn meter. Especially that this team has a lot of debuffs in general. So they're not able to do a whole lot here. 
Uh, we're able to get a ton of dots out, both via Vader and via Want. Grand Inquisitor does a decent hit there, and I think he gets his Torture, whatchamacallit, on. But now, we've got a ton of uh, dots on him, and we just one-shot him. So now it's just a question of playing the rest of the match correctly. Or, of course it is. But playing the rest of the match in a way that we get enough dots on ninth so that um, um, a Cloying Blade kills her, and we don't just time out on this match. That's that's really what it comes down to. And Fracturing her is going to be really nice, because then we can get the dots to stay on her because she won't take a turn to, to get rid of them all at once so i uh, do make sure to fracture here here that was very important go ahead and get our merciless here on fifth get him out of the way just so he's not a nuisance and yeah name of the game is just stack up ninth with dots until we can manage a really big hit we do pop them there also we do that so that we can get full protection back on want because i guess we we're caring about banners now um get the fracture back on ninth again Watt is now at full turn meter or full protection and we just swat ninth out of there. So that was really, really cool. Now we've got to go ahead and take out the, the Kyle Katarn team. And I knew, I knew this was a bad idea going into it. We don't have a whole lot left on our roster. And that's, that's going to be pretty evident against the next couple of battles. So this was not, this just wasn't a good idea. You have to, we've done, we've actually done this battle, I think twice before and gotten it both times, maybe once. And really what you need to happen is you need for Wrecker to land his two turn stun on all four characters and that buys you enough time to build up enough courage to be able to start killing them uh, as you're going to see as this battle goes on we, we get stuns on like one or two characters and it's never mothma so she just cleanses it so the two turn stun just means nothing even if we get it on one or two characters we, we need really need to get it on all four so that's obviously not happening and they're they're getting away with quite a bit of damage against us the the attack out of turns don't do a whole lot but if kyle katarn now that he's he got boosted to his uh i think like 50 percent damage it's something like that with his um i forget what the actual name of his buff is the one that he's got it's like it's jedi something or other i'm pretty sure that, that doesn't narrow it down though uh he he gets more damage from that he gets defense penetration from the worthless guy over there and eventually he he has the capability to hit really really hard outside of the assists so we do try to leave the courage on wrecker a little bit just so that we can get one big hit on someone so they don't just keep healing up um doesn't really work out for us the best we get another turn for two turn stun we get it on two characters but of course uh one of them isn't mothma so it it, it doesn't matter um she she ends up cleansing the other two they're able oh Kyle Gatarn gets a big hit there and gets rid of Ahsoka and I mean we had a slim chance of this working beforehand there's no chance it works now without us so we needed Ahsoka's damage and her uh, protection up so we end up taking a nest here I didn't like this initially but again we're really just running out of options the reason why I didn't like this is because Kyle Katarn has potency up and worthless guy over there has days so once he gets his first promotion he's gonna land days and then you're not gonna be able to do anything and honestly even without kyle katarn nest is kind of kind of risky in general against fully relic rebel fighter teams just because they have so much stats um i'm gonna i'm gonna skip through most of this battle here just because it's gonna be it's gonna be a very long battle that no one's gonna gain anything from watching the entire thing of but they uh, they have enough survivability and enough recovery that I think even without the days, I don't think we would have actually ever worked our way all the way through Kyle Katarn. So, um, Wordless Guy does get promoted there. And you can see once he gets promoted, he's able to pretty consistently land days on us. Oh, I guess it looks like I cut that part out. He lands days on us and that's the end of the match. But one of the things that we did do is we made sure to end the bat match with Kara using her AoE so that we could take troopers in. Oh, I forgot to mention, they had the, the TM datacron as well so that's why we didn't originally take troopers because they were gonna outspeed our troopers stun everyone and if, if they target veers then we're pretty much dead in the water uh so we take in this after we make sure to get rid of kara's whatchamacallit um they take control and we win so that was really nice now we've got to go ahead and take out their newt team here this is pretty standard newt team we go ahead and drop the turn meter on newt and then we throw the two turn stun on him i really just don't want to have to deal with extortion this match and i'm like our team has enough survivability that I'm just going to guess. I'm going to guess that Django and Newt don't have enough damage to get through us. And we actually, we, we decided to hit B1 with crew. And the reason why is I don't need to keep the taunt on by hitting a, a debuffed character. Because Django is going to ignore taunt and B1 always uses his AoE. So there's no, there was no point in keeping the taunt on crew at that point. It was better to just knock down some stacks of B1. 
We tried to pass the turns back to crew as much here as possible so that we can start to link the two turn stuns so that we never have to worry about getting extorted by Newt. Um, kind of works really well. We're able to get a two turn stun on both the, the Newt and Django at one time, even with them being pretty decently fast. We go ahead and control Newt. Uh, he does get extortion out on crew, but it's not really that big of a deal. We're still able to get back the, the two turn stun over there on Django. And then pretty much keep extortion off entirely. I uh, keep giving turns back to crew, keep stunning. This team just has a has a ton of control. I really, I've always really, really liked this team. Uh, and now we're trying to get banners back by only ever using Fox's basic because that gives them more buffs. And 55 banners doesn't end up being enough. Uh, the Inquisitor team down below, we go ahead and take our gear 12 Treya. I didn't think it was going to work against the, the Grand Inquisitor when he was doing a bunch of max health damage. But I was pretty sure it would work fine here, especially with 7th Sister constantly attacking on a turn, which she does do, so that's pretty cool. Um, we do go ahead and isolate second just so that she can't get offense up. Try to take advantage of 7th there and try to kill her. We make sure to get her Foresight off so that the, the next hit with Nihilus, we can increase her cooldowns, or at least rather steal her cooldowns. Uh, we didn't use hell by hatred with cyan huge misplay don't do that that was that was not intentional and then here we're able to annihilate second and then i'm kind of curious if we can get max protection banners with cyan uh because we keep if we keep increasing his or decreasing his cooldowns with trey and giving him bonus protection he's gonna have a bunch of opportunities to be able to get that protection back via his special so that's exactly what we do uh we and we use hell by hatred again just to get closer to those cooldowns try to use our least damaging attacks with everyone else and we get the protection back so that was awesome uh now we go ahead go ahead and go up against this band with geos and this battle so he has he has really good relics on all these characters i think it's it's r8 and r7 on them um so we take in our geos and we have a gear 12 with our geos and typically this battle is fine um and we we probably could have annihilated their their bam here I'm not sure why i didn't do that uh, he gets damage immunity out this isn't this isn't that big of a deal. We wait to use the cleanse once everyone already loot or they already get all their debuffs out. Uh, start to go back over to get the bam. I believe we do just take the big hit on him here and whack. He goes down pretty easily. But now we have to deal with these two and they have a ton of recovery. And this very unfortunate moment happens here where IG kills soldier, you know, gear 12. Um, and then I don't know if you guys can tell by the timer. But we straight up just timed out on this. We could not get Quill down without all four characters. They just had way too much recovery. Uh, so we have to get through the dash team now. And I take in, we take in our JTR. I'm like, cause she has a lot of ways to cleanse. Like she'll probably, she'll probably be fine here. Uh, so they have two dazes, but we we get through them pretty quickly thanks to both R2s and JTR's cleanses. That was really really easy. Uh, then we just work our way through L3. We we push back turn meter on Nest. It's a little. The daze and stuff is a little futile, I guess, because she's got, um, and the stun, honestly, because whenever we keep hitting L3, she'll eventually cleanse those, um, at some point here. I think she's just trying to cleanse herself at this point, which I guess kind of makes sense, or maybe, I think that interaction might be bugged, actually, but she cleanses there, so it can't be totally bugged. Get the stun on Ness, just so when she takes a turn, uh, don't really have an option here, just go right after L3. Not really worried here. Uh, JTR has no issues getting through Ness. She has a lot of tools to be able to deal with her. Uh, the undispellable healing immunity is pretty great as well, as well as the days. And then we have a few stuns just in case we need it. So we got the days on her. Uh, she does have a little bit of protection up. We get the healing immunity on her. So now, as soon as she takes a turn, she's just gonna keel over and die. So it's gonna be as far as that goes. And then for their bounty hunter team, they have a Danbot Boba team with Zam and Boba. Uh, so we take on our own, and again, at this point, we don't have a lot of good teams left, so we're just kind of working with what we got. Uh, we actually decide not to go with the taunt, because most of this team ignores taunt, and we don't have another character that had a special at the time to be able to do things. So this this really sucked. Boba one-shot Embo. So I guess I need to get my Embo Zeta now, so that he couldn't crit him. He would have survived that, and that match probably would have worked. Um, so I ended up failing there, and then... <laughs> We take in Cody lead uh, with Arc and Echo to clean up. So we immediately get rid of Zam so that her GAC bonus stats go away. And then we're, we're actually able to take apart this team with just these uh, these three. Very, very close match. Um, 
end up getting that team down and now we need to clean up their Igene Queel with Night Sisters which this should work pretty well they don't they don't have a lot of ways to uh, a lot of ways to just do their normal health um so I'm pretty sure that Plague will eventually just get to them and that pretty much be is exactly what happens there their IG dies to Plague rather quickly and then with just just Queel sitting there it's not that bad we do try to juggle the the shocks a little bit uh, get rid of his buffs and stuff try to stun him now that ig is gone so that is pretty darn helpful and just work our way all the way through him until he's dead and then the last match we have is to clean up that jedi anakin we left over so we actually go ahead and use this ig team it's actually pretty good they have a lot of synergy between being double droid scoundrel um so can't can't land the stun or shock on jedi anakin for the life bus but we do eventually just take him down and we actually get to use queel and ig to a pretty cool ability because we already you know quote unquote wasted bam with the other team so we get that win there and then as far as ships go i'm not, I'm not going to show those battles just because they were really we just took executor against their exact actually i'll go ahead and show it but i guess that will be the final results here uh flip over to blue stacks and we actually did win this match uh by six banners i'm really glad we won by six banners and didn't lose by six banners because i would have been thinking of like all the ways we could have saved banners the entire time but uh, ships there really just wasn't anything to show because of my big blunder that I had mentioned in the very beginning of the stream I took in the wrong fleets like I don't leave Hux on defense ever terrible um, but that was left over from when we went up against our last opponent and I didn't change it so that was irresponsibility on my part that being said we used negotiator against Radis and we used executor against negotiator he had the triple attacker lineup for attacker line up for executor here and we wouldn't have been able to mirror because this was r9 ours was r8 so yeah really doesn't know there was not a lot of strategy there but at the end of the day c held up and i guess every battle counted like these oh my gosh he really tried last time i saw it was eight wow that must have been frustrating um okay good job c malik really proud of you so he had he had two galactic legends on offense so i'm guessing jmk got one and i'm guessing something failed on c because he one shot my whole front board so that was really nice and then up top i think he failed against cls too so i mean every every one of these fails counted guys oh he failed once on cls so oh and he failed twice on new so those every single match counted even the fails in, on fleet too so overall really good match i'm very very proud or very very content with a lot of the battles that we did the the, the esagar versus ray was really cool jml versus jmk was awesome the fennec getting to work versus lord vader for the first time was also really cool so overall i enjoyed myself immensely for this match uh thank you guys for watching remember to like and subscribe and as always stay awesome